All right, guys, today we're going to do the inverse trig functions. Um, so a couple things. Let's remember that inverse is switching x and y and then solving for y. So we have it written down as arc, tan arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. Last year, we saw it written as sine to the negative 1 of x cosine to the negative 1 of x and tangent to the negative 1 of x. So these two, these guys are the same right here. So they can be written any way. So what we need to uh, keep in mind also is that when we do the inverse, we want it to be a function. So since it's a function, we need to uh, restrict the domain, which restricts the range. Okay? Values of y's there. If we didn't restrict them, we don't have a function anymore. Think of a sine graph. A sine graph is our snake, right? Well, then... If we did the horizontal line test, it wouldn't match. So that's why we have to restrict it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to graph it going backwards. So let's think of our unit circle right now. At zero, sine is zero. So if I flip x and y, I still get zero, zero. Okay. At pi over two, sine is one. So at 1, we have pi over 2. At negative pi over 2, right, so down below on our unit circle, sine is negative 1. So if I flip those, at negative 1, I'm at negative pi over 2. Of course, let's keep in mind this is not linear, even though it looks linear, right? So it's kind of our curve. There we go. All right, so let's do the same thing for cosine. Cosine, <clears throat> let's see. Um, how do I want to do this? Let's look at cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one. So if I flip that, that means at one, it's zero. <clears throat> so again, I'm just switching X and Y, guys. Sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Now let's look at pi over 2. At pi over 2, cosine is 0. So if I flip that, it means at 0, it's pi over 2. Okay. And now at pi, because I want to do pi. At pi... Cosine is negative 1, so let's flip that around. So that means that negative 1, it is pi. Again, it looks linear, but we know it is not linear. Erase that a little bit so it looks a little bit more curvy. All right, and then tangent, same thing. Let's think of it. Tangent at zero is zero. Okay. Um, now, here's the problem. Because at pi over two, tangent is actually undefined. So we know undefined as asymptotes. And because we're doing the arc tangent, we know they're horizontal asymptotes now, not vertical asymptotes. That goes the same for negative pi over 2. So let's think of this. Um, 1. Where is tangent 1? Well, tangent of 1 is at pi over 4. So pi over 4 is going to be halfway in there, between there. And negative 1, well, that would be negative pi over 4. And again, even though this looks linear, it's not. And we have asymptotes. So it's going to curve and keep going like that. 
Awesome. Okay, so this is a better view of the unit circle and how we do it. Hopefully last year your teacher told you when we had our unit circle to cover certain sides. So when we were doing arc sign, we would cover the second and third quadrant and only look at the first and the fourth. That was the same thing with our tangent or tangent inverse. For cosine though, we had to cover the third and the fourth. Okay, hopefully that's coming back to you. So um, what I like about this explanation down here is it makes you think through the process. So the two biggest mistakes that students make with inverse trig functions are one, putting the inappropriate range value for the answer. So in other words, you're dealing with the wrong quadrants or putting more than one range value for the answer. Okay. So let's look at those. So it says for an example, arc sine of negative one half. Okay. Well, if you look, negative one half, if we take arc sine and we cover the first, I mean the second and the third quadrant, and you look for where sine equals negative one half, we get it down here right right down here so the question is what do we put for this value the correct answer is negative pi over six the reason for that is because if we start at zero we go down this is clockwise and we go negative pi over six now <coughs> excuse me and there's only one answer the inappropriate answer is 7 pi over 6, which is over here, right? Because it's not in the correct quadrant. And we also do not want to pick 11 pi over 6. Because even though on our unit circle, if we were to make our unit circle really quickly, we would go 11 pi over 6 goes all the way around. We don't want this full angle here. We just want this small angle. Does that make sense, guys? Okay, actually, what I would like you to do right now is pause this video, get a sheet of paper out, and see if you can create your unit circle by heart fast. All right, hopefully that went well. Example two says, explain why arc of negative one half equals 11 pi over six or seven pi over six are not true. And we went through that. They're in the wrong quadrants, okay? And even though 11 pi over six is in the fourth quadrant, we, won't, we don't want that full angle. We actually want to go clockwise to give us our negative pi over six. Okay, so now, hopefully you did your unit circle, we can evaluate where these inverse trig functions equal. So I'm going to grab my unit circle out that I made. You use the one that you just made, and we're going to go through the process, okay? So if I do arc tangent, I'm going to cover up this side, and it says tangent of one so where is tangent equal one that would be pi over four um cosine of negative one cosine we cover the bottom we look for negative one which is pi Then we have a sine of a negative square root of 3 over 2. Cover up the second and third quadrant. Sine negative square root of 3 over 2 is down here. Though I'm not going to put 5 pi over 3. What it is is going backwards here. Negative pi over 3. Okay. 
a quick way to know when you go backwards what it is is it's just the denominator it's pi over the denominator if we were going backwards with this part of the quadrant guys you could look up and just reflect down so if I went backwards here I would look up here and say hey this going clockwise is 3 pi over 4 but it's going to be a negative that's just a really quick um, mini lesson there okay um, evaluate without a calculator arc sign well if you look and we cover this up do we know at any place without a calculator guys that sign of something is 2 no so we don't have it it doesn't exist okay now we're going to do stuff with our calculator so get those out remember every time we do this we're in our radian let me clear that out so arc arc is when oh let me try to get this so it doesn't glare there we go okay um is in the blue so we're going to do second sign and you guys can't see that let me shut off the light and see if that works so a little bit better nope and there is a glare sorry guys okay you try to do it on your calculator so do inverse sign a point three and we get point three zero five remember we're going out three decimal places next we have arc tangent so second tangent on your calculator don't forget to put negative five divided by two and we get negative one point one nine zero awesome okay I'm actually going to turn back on the light guys because we're doing this without a calculator there we go all right as you can see guys we have two things going on here <clears throat> one of the things to make sure you don't make a mistake is to do each one separately there are two functions here so I'm going to do two steps the first thing I'm going to do is do arc sine square root of 3 over 2. So cover up your second and third quadrant. Where is sine square root of 3 over 2? Well, it is at pi over 3. So we have sine of pi over 3. I just did that first function now I'll do this one what is sine pi over 3 well it is square root of 3 over 2 do not get into this habit sometimes this will happen sometimes it won't now tangent of our tangent of 3 so guys if you noticed when it is positive it is in the first quadrant and sine tangent and cosine come out the same okay example since this is a positive square root of 3 over 2 it ends up in the first quadrant for sine right because this fourth quadrant is negative so it's exactly the same answer if it ended up in the fourth quadrant it's going to be a little bit different that does the same thing for tangent so since arc tangent of 3 is some degree in quadrant 1 that means tangent of that angle is the same value okay this will happen again for cosine because cosine oh so this we're going backwards okay you guys did that we changed our 
functions, the order of our functions. So the first thing we're going to do is find cosine of pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3 <coughs> is 1 half. So I have arc cosine of 1 half. And now if we do cosine, we have to cover arc cosine. We have to cover up the third and fourth quadrant. And look, we are still in the first quadrant because in the second quadrant, cosine is negative. So as you can see here, the answer is still pi over 3. Here is the one where it's tricky. Sine 11 pi over 6. We'll find sine of 11 pi over 6. We get arc sine of negative 1 half. Because it is negative, guys, this is where we have to be careful. Since it is negative, we are going to actually be doing that clockwise angle. So it is not 11 pi over 6. Because remember, when we cover up these two, 11 pi over 6 covers the whole circle here. It goes into our domain restriction. So... If we're coming down here to sine negative one half here, we are going to get negative pi over six. So if it's positive, guys, you can just assume that it's going to be that answer, but when it comes to these two, okay? But when you have a negative in the arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, we have a little bit of an issue. Okay. All right, let's do number six right now. We are solving. So, of course, how do we get rid of an arc sine? We take the sine of both sides. And that cancels these two out. So we're left with x squared minus 3 equals, well, what's sine of pi over 2? Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Now let's solve. x squared equals 4. So x equals plus or minus 2. And we're done. Okay, sketch a right triangle and evaluate without a calculator. Given x's arc cosine of 2 over the square root of 5, find tangent. Okay, this is positive, And we know arc cosine is only in the first and the second quadrant. And because this is positive, we know it's in the first quadrant. So I'm going to make my right triangle. Cosine is what over what? It is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now you guys are to use the Pythagorean theorem to find this height. And we get the value of 1. We then know that if we are finding tangent of x, well, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Our radian or our degree will always be from the origin, guys. All right, let's look at number eight. Okay, arc sine, so it's the first and the fourth quadrant, but this is positive, so I'm going to automatically make it in the first quadrant. Now, x is the same thing as x over 1, so that means opposite is x, hypotenuse is 1. If we are to do the, the Pythagorean theorem and solve 
for our adjacent there. So you can do that math on the side. It comes out to the square root of 1 minus x squared. Side note, you cannot cancel the square root out because of the subtraction. Remember, to cancel the square root, the whole thing must be squared, but the whole thing is not. So if we were to find cosine, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, let's see. Use your example, use your work from example 8 to find the derivative of arc sine. All right. Well, let's keep in mind that if we say y equals arc sine of x, that's the same thing as saying sine y equals x. We have x's and y here, so we need to think of this as implicit. So let's take the derivative of both sides. The derivative of sine is cosine y times the derivative of the inside, which the derivative of y is y prime equals, well, the derivative of x is 1. Now we are going to solve for y prime, so we get y prime equals 1 over cosine y. Now this is where we use example 8 because what does cosine y equal? Well, from example 8 we found that cosine y is the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, so how does that help us? Well, if you turn the page, now we have the derivatives of your inverse functions. And guys, try to look for patterns on how to memorize this. Put these on your note cards. Start studying them. Get used to them. Let's practice them a little bit. So we have our tangent. So we're going to uh, do the derivative, so g prime of y. Well, our tangent would be 1 over 1 minus. Now, this is our x, guys. So that would be 2y minus 1 squared. We also have to multiply by the derivative of the inside which is 2. Oh, and it's not minus here, it's plus. Sorry, guys. And you can leave it at that. Sometimes you might have to uh, simplify that more, but that's all it is. Let's try 11. So we have f prime of x equals, well, arc sine is 1 over the square root of 1 minus, and then it's going to be square root of x squared times the derivative of the inside, which is 1 half square root of x. Well, if we put that together, we get f prime of x equals 1 over 2 square root of x, that's from this denominator, times square root of 1 minus, well, the square root of x squared is x. Awesome. Oh, let me bring that up so you guys can see that. One more, h 
prime of t equals, well, we start out with negative 1 all over square root of 1 minus ln t. Now, don't forget, all of that is in parentheses, guys, so it doesn't look like the t is squared. And then times the derivative, which the derivative of ln is 1 over And we are done. All right, try some of that practice. Add those derivatives to your note cards to start studying.